All right, so let's go over this here real quick. Um, <clears throat> if ABC is isosceles, first of all, on these first couple, I, I, I don't know how you do it without a picture. So you're going to have to, I, I would strongly recommend drawing a picture. Here, A, B, and B, C are the same. So then my angles that are opposite are, are my base angles. So angle A and angle C. Same thing here, PQR, this was a commonly missed one. Angle Q is congruent to angle R, so there's my Q and R. So PQ is congruent to PR, okay? Um, and going down, if M, N, and O are all the same, then all the three sides are the same, okay? Most commonly missed one is right here. You what? No, <laughs> almost everybody put 180 degrees. Now slow down and just think about what I'm asking. Yeah, it says, if all three angles are the same, or no, if all three sides are the same, then angle X equals angle Y equals angle Z, which they are all 60 degrees. Okay. So to flip, um, I had a slide or a spin. Um, some people for translation had like shove um, or rotation turn, several different things. Okay. Um, if, let's see, on these, a horizontal line of symmetry. So across this horizontal line, both top and bottom are the same. Across this horizontal line, top and bottom are the same. Across this vertical line, left and right are the same. Across the vertical line, left and right are the same. Rotational symmetry. Now I'm talking rotational symmetry less than 360 degrees. Because <laughs> I know everything has the rotational symmetry if you look at 360 degrees, but that's not really rotational symmetry. Okay. So H, I figured H, if you spin it 180 degrees, turn it upside down, it's still H. Same with I, and vertical rotational symmetry, O, horizontal, vertical, rotational, same thing with this one, X is also one that fits all three, okay? So remember, you draw the line, it's got to be the same on both sides. Four, let's smoke through this here real quick. Um, <coughs> I don't know, we don't have a lot today, so. Um, so on this one, I thought, well, what, what kind of equation am I going to set up? Well, if I want to deal with y, y is a side. It's side xw. xw matches up with bc. So then I know that xw, bc, so then 2y plus 1 equals 11. Okay, then your, there's your equation, y is 5. Now, as far as my x's, I don't know if I've got to add these up to 180. I don't know what I've got to do until I check out my relationship. w is 77. So what does that come over here to match up with on the other one? B. So W and B match up. So 24, 24x plus 5 equals 77. You can solve that and you get x is 3. Watch your matches. Okay, your correspondence. Same thing here. Uh, what do I have um, for my x? JP is the same as HJ. So um, 2x minus 1 equals 9. Solve it, you get x is 5. Okay? And this is almost a little too light for people to see. Okay? Down here, um, this one I got th that, that angle, that angle, and then this one's 53. So if I add all those up, I should get 180. Simplify, and I get y is 5. So a lot of this is just what property can you find that works, and then um, and then write an equation. Number five. I had a lot of people on number five just say that um, angle A and angle D were the same. We can't really say that because angle A, am I dealing with this, this angle, this angle, or the whole angle? I gotta be more specific, okay? Whenever there's any room for confusion, go ahead and name the whole angle. BAD and BDA. If one and two are the same, well then, those sides are the same, A, C, and C, D. Okay? Now, moving on up. Um, works better with the light on. Okay, so this one for Y, it's pretty straightforward. Those two things got to be equal. Mm -hmm. Y is 2. For my X, well, if that's 80, I took 80 away from 180, gave me 100, divided that by 2, so each angle's got to be 50. That's got to be 50 degrees, that's got to be 50 degrees. So 50 is equal to 6x plus 8, 
x is 7. Okay, on this one over here, b. These two, 3x plus 5s are the same. So what that tells me is those two sides are the same. 2y plus 1 equals 11. y is 5. Now for my x, add them all three up to get 180, simplify, solve it, and get 17. Okay. C. Um, um, same thing here, 180 minus 50, that's my vertex angle, so my others are going to have 130 degrees split between the two, so 65 and 65. Going over here to D, I don't know if that's 41, that's got to be 41. So then what I figured out is how many degrees do I have left for Y? I took 180 minus 41 and 41, give me 98 left over. You guys are getting better at finding angles, I'm very happy with that. E, okay. So since these two sides are the same, that's an isosceles triangle, 90, and this is 45 and 45. Okay, um, actually that's, I, that's not right here. So that's 45, this is going to be 135, so if I subtract that, divide that by 2, that will give me these two sides, if that's an isosceles triangle, those two angles I should say. 7. Okay. Seven, I went ahead and graphed it, um, and it was organized PQ equals square root of 17, QR is 4, PR is 5, um, and then you've got the same thing with these three. So how to match it up, here's what I did. Q is the one that shares the square root of 17 and 4. So over here, the one that shares the square root of 17 and 4 is Y. So Q and Y match up, that's how I put that first one. Now let's go down to this bottom one. 4 and 5, that's R that shares that vertex. The vertex between those two would be R. 4 and 5 that shares this one would be X. So R and X and then Z is my leftover. And that is a rotation. Okay. Okay. I decided to do kitty cats. Translation. Reflection. Rotation. Hello. Sounds good. Okay. I'll be done here in probably about two minutes and he can oh. come back down. Okay. I'll just send it in two minutes. Great. Thanks. Okay. This one, 10. So, okay, what do I got here? 66. These two sides are the same, so these two are base angles. So one's got to be 66. 180 degrees minus 66 minus 66 gives me... 48. So if that's 48, linear pair, that's got to be 132. So that's 132 and that's 20. Add those up, 152, subtract from 180, and I get 28 degrees left. Okay. Bonus A. Um, I might discuss bonus A more tomorrow when we're in a big group, because here's how I did bonus A. Yeah, um, so I might wait and just kind of show you know share that with the group. Um, yeah, it was weird. We had you had a lot of different information you had to consider, um, and so but the answers were twenty, forty, and one forty, and um, and then B. What's one gift you'd like to give to someone? I've got there. There's a there's a gal that rescues dogs down in Missouri. She. Um, she probably, in her lifetime, has saved thousands of dogs. Goes around to the pounds, takes pictures, posts them on Facebook, and then um, I don't know how much have I have I talked about this much at all. Okay, so she's a full-time nurse, and what she does is she, uh, let's say, if you're down in in Missouri. Okay, you got the boot heel in Missouri. I don't know what Missouri looks like. Something like that. Does that same seem about right for Missouri? I don't know. She's down here somewhere, okay? Say she works there, and there's a, maybe a pound here, a, a pound here, a pound here, a pound here. You know, there's there's rescue pounds down there. Well, they're not really rescue pounds or humane studies like you guys think of. What they are is, um, yeah, I'm recording this. It's all right, okay? What she does is, well, the, the, what they'll do is if they find a stray dog, They'll put it in this building with some kennels in it. No electricity, 
no nothing, and they wait, you know, the um, required amount of time before they put the dog down. You know, because they can't afford to keep the dog forever if nobody claims it. So, um, you know, that's just a sad truth. And down there, it's very low income, so a lot of people um, don't spay their dogs, don't neuter their dogs, and so there's, and, and they don't give their dogs, um, you know, the, the correct care with the, with the shots and everything. So anyway, so what she does is on her days off or in the evenings or whatever, she'll go drive around to these pounds and take pictures and post them on Facebook. Okay, she started a group that um, that you know she that rescues all you know all over the central United States follow her page and they keep an eye open for dogs that they think they can save. Okay. So then, if we, if like say the rescue I work with, if I see a dog that I like, I can contact my lady in, in Lincoln, and I say, hey, I think I can help that dog, or I'd like to take that dog. Can you tag it for me? So then, what they'll do is they'll go to Facebook page and they'll tag it, and Leslie will take that dog out of the pound, bring it to her place or maybe a, a temporary foster home, and um, and then and then. Leslie will ask, you know, well, what, 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 um, you come on in, yeah. She'll ask, what vetting do you want done? And if we say, um, we want it spayed, give it all the shots, do the check for all the worms and everything, and get it ready to go, then she will. She'll take it to the vet, and, and she does a lot of work, doesn't get paid for it at all. And then every two weeks, they have volunteers that will, like, say, okay, here we are up in Nebraska, okay, uh, something like that. Here's Lincoln, and um, they will load all these dogs up on cars, and they have somebody drive it the first hour, somebody drive it the next hour and a half, and then somebody else drive it here, and somebody else drive it here, and somebody else drive it here, and somebody else drive it up here, and somebody else drive it here, and then we pick them up down in Mountain City. That's all volunteers, which is kind of cool, okay? Oh, it is. Like, like say, um, one of the last dogs I got, it was the my vehicle was the eighth or ninth vehicle it had been in that day. Yeah, so it's long days for the dogs. And what I think is really neat is it's all, you know, there's a lot of good people out there that, that are just giving up their time. Like Leslie, she makes nothing out of any of this. Can you imagine being a pain in the butt? Yeah. Every two weeks she, she saves, I'd say, somewhere between 25 and 50 dogs. Okay. So then what she, so she, she hands off the information to some other lady who organizes the transport. She says, okay, we got a transport going this way, we got a transport going this way, um, we got a transport going up here, so we need seven cars that are going to go through from here to here. And we need five cars that are going to go from here to here, you know. And she sets all that up and then she puts it out on Facebook and then people volunteer for, for you know, because like this person that's driving might live here. They got to go there, pick up the dogs, and then take them to here, and then go back home. You know, so it's really, and then that's that's kind of how the whole operation works. If they have a um, like a litter of puppies that they really want to get up here fast, there's another setup that um, it's pilots called pilots for uh, yeah pilots for paws that um, our director Carrie will get onto the internet and. Put a request. I need some puppies flown from Missouri to Lincoln. And people that want to fly their planes, they'll go, okay, I'll take them from Missouri to Kansas City. And so one person will fly them from here to here. And then another guy or gal will step up and say, okay, I'll take them from Kansas City to Lincoln. And they'll fly them from here to here. All volunteer, all free. It was really pretty slick. So, um, so when I say, what is the gift I'd like to give somebody? When I say a fence to Leslie, she does not have a fence around her property. So next summer, I'm going down, and I'm going to build her fence. I'm going to gather up all the inf all the uh, all the materials, and then next summer, I'm putting her up a fence. And um, that's just what we're going to do. So, but one thing that I thought was cool about your gifts that you guys chose for people is that. Um, they were very mature, very caring choices. I was very impressed. You know, um, I, I read I actually read them to my wife last night, and, um, and she came away very impressed.
because um, you, you guys, you know, it wasn't something like, you know, a radio for my uh, brother. Or it was, you know, like um, like one person said something about um, there's a lot of kids that don't have good home lives. I wish that I could give them a good home life, you know. And um, anyway, I was like, that's great. Or, or clothes, warm clothes for the kids that can't, can't afford it uh, before the winter. So I was, I was pretty impressed by that. Why do people die in the cold? That's a good question. Um, that's a very good question. Or, you know, around here, you know, of course, that's not something you hear about. But um, I would, would assume that in the larger populations where there's a, a larger homeless population, it's probably a little bit more. Um, but, but I don't know. That's one of those things that we can't take what we have for granted. Okay. So, um, I'm going to save the folding activity for tomorrow because I want everybody to go through that. Okay. So, what I'm going to do here is I'm, gonna, I'm going to um, introduce one new thing to you guys. And then I'm going to hold the other people responsible. So, but thanks for letting me kind of go off about the, uh, the dog stuff here just a little bit. I get another dog tomorrow. Um, her name is Gemma. She is getting spayed as we speak in Lincoln, and um, I go pick her up in Wahoo tomorrow. So, and I'm not keeping this one. I've already got too many. <laughs> Way too many. One of my dogs broke a foot the other day. Yeah. Um, so, a couple things. Yesterday, we talked about this. We got A, B, And yesterday, um, we talked about this, but I want to write this out a little bit better. Um, let's, let's call this um, C and, okay, if I go like this. If I say that this is the perpendicular bisector, what's, what was it that we learned yesterday? That any point on the perpendicular bisector is, any point on the perpendicular bisector is, Equidistant from? Good. Okay. So what I'm going to do, P, if I said this, let's go, let's go like this. PC is um, perpendicular bisector of AB. Okay. I want to prove PA equals PB. I got two proofs I want to throw at you guys today. I just want to make sure that we um, don't lose what we've done so far. So, here we go. Let's rock this out. PC is perpendicular bisector of AB. Given. Okay? So, what does this mean if PC is perpendicular bisector? A C equals C B. I agree. What would you put for a reason there, bud? Uh, awesome. Okay, and I've got that label. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and draw my two triangles here. Well, that's a terrible, terrible curve segment. Okay. What do, I, what do I know about angles one and two? They're equal. They're equal. So angle one is congruent to angle two. Why? They're supplementary. That's true. But what, what, what is up here doesn't say anything about supplementary. So I want to use something else. Uh, well, definition of bisector doesn't mean it's... Midpoint? Uh, midpoint? No. Perpendicular, right? When things are perpendicular, they form 90 degree angles, right? And those are equal to each other. So I would just say definition of perpendicular. Okay, now keep in mind our goal is to show that PA equals PB. That's my goal. So we're trying to get the triangles congruent. 
Are the triangles congruent? Come on, what else do we have? Uh, PC. PC equals PC. Why? Now, now what? Are the triangles congruent? Yeah. Why? Yeah. Angle, side angle side. Side angle side? A, C, P, B, C, P. Okay, and then P, A is equal to P, B because... C, P, P. C, P. C, P, C. <laughs> CP, 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 CC. I, I don't know. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Okay? So that was the perpendicular bisector theorem. So now you can skip all that, and if, it, if it's a point on a perpendicular bisector, you can just say, you know what? If it's on a perpendicular bisector, I can just go right to PA equals PB because we just proved the perpendicular bisector theorem. Okay? Been proven. Okay. Another thing that we're going to talk that that they're going to talk about today, and I'll just do a couple basic things, is um, this idea. Um, so if I take an angle, let's call this a, and I bisect this angle. My drawing is not very good. I'm going to try and draw, make my drawing just a little bit better. This pencil leaves a lot to be desired. Maybe it's the person operating the pencil. Okay. So here's the general gist of things, and I'll clear, I'll tidy this up in just a little bit. Let's say if this is a P, a B, um, and if this bisects it. So if AC bisects PAB, then if I pick any point, that distance there is the same as that distance there. This distance here is the same as that distance there. This distance here is the same as that distance there. If it's bisected, all those distances are equal to each other. Okay. But, when I measure the distance to something, what angle do I need to measure at? Like, remember when I was measuring my height up here? When I measure from the top of my head to the floor, what angle did I need to measure to the floor? Perpendicular. perpendicular. So all these, they would be perpendicular. So whenever I measure something, it's got to be perpendicular. So I would like to prove that real quick. And then we're going to move on. Okay. I think actually after I do this we'll be done. So, so let's go like this. Um, I'm going to highlight just the stuff that I'm going to use up here. I'm going to pick a point here. Let's call this um, how D. So any point D on the perpendicular bisector is equidistant from the rays. Okay? So what I'm trying to prove is that D is no, so any point on the angle bisector, I think I misspoke just a little bit, is equidistant from the sides of the angle. Okay. That's what I'd like to show. So, just out of clarity, you guys don't have to change yours because this is the proof part of things that you guys just need this information more than anything. Okay. Okay. So, given a um, D bisects angle PAB. Given. I'm going to name this angle 1, name that angle 2. 
So I'm trying to prove that that distance is equal to this distance. Hmm. Those two distances are the same. Okay, if AB bisects PAB, what's true? I already have a label, but I just have my proof. Okay. So how about I just go, can I go angle one? Yeah. Angle two? Okay. Why are angle one and two the same? Yeah, because it's like this. Okay. Okay. And we know that this has got to be perpendicular. That's just, you know, we're just going to have that be a kind of a duh part. Let's give points to this right here. Let's go x and y. I want to prove that dx equals dy. Now let's go like this. Um, 3 and 4. Angle 3 is congruent to angle 4. Why? I'll tell you, what, I'm just going to put this one in here. Distance is always perpendicular. Okay? So we got to get these two triangles congruent. Are those two triangles congruent? Come on, we're getting there. Why? Then are the triangles congruent? Then are the triangles congruent? Well, take a look at it. Yes, angle angle side. So triangle A Y D is congruent to triangle A X D angle angle side. And then DX is DY is congruent is congruent and those are equal to Y. There you go, C, P, C, T, C, okay? So what, basically, long story short, any point on an angle bisector is always equidistant from the sides of the angle. If it's on the angle bisector, it's equidistant from the sides of the angle, okay? So, um, let me find an example to do here real quick for you. And then I'll give you a very short assignment. We'll move on. So like this one here, um, we'll zoom in. I know the answer is right there, but this is still good. Right there, right there. Okay. So first of all, P is on the angle bisector. So P has got to be the same distance from BA as it does BC. So if this is 8, then that's 8. Okay. If I go over to my other one, oh, I went too far. Okay, so if this is 4, this is 4, well then, actually, we're dealing with the converse now. If it's the same distance away, then this has to bisect it. So if that's 23, this is going to be 23. Okay, so if it's the same distance away, it must lie on the bisector. Okay, so, so today, like I said, very short. So get you something just to kind of reinforce some things there and hold the people, people that are gone responsible for something. Um, let's go page 330, numbers...
Twenty-one through twenty-six. Fairly short. Very, very short, actually. Um, oh, it's not. Yeah, I'm not, yeah, because I forgot I zoomed in for that. Um, Twenty-one through twenty-six, and. Um, the folding tomorrow. Let's do page 343. 44 through 40. 44 through 50. 